Hi, my name is Matt Dem. I'm an application engineer here at Access New England. And in this video, I will demonstrate how you can increase the functionality of your universal robot by using a MOXA N port in order to speak serially down to any kind of older machine or even a servo drive like this Copley Zenus here. Pretty simply. The first thing we want to do after connecting up our device is to open the N port administrator tool. From here, we can search for any M ports connected to our computer. It's already found it, so we'll stop our search a little bit early. And then we can just double click on the M port we want to configure to open up the menu. The first thing we want to change is the IP address. We need to make sure that the M port is on the same network as our robot. Our robot will be on the dot one network, so we use dot 89 after dot one to make it unique. Next, we'll modify our serial communication parameters. So, the first step is to change the baud rate to match the one that our device is using. A Copley defaults at 9600. Then, we can go through and change the parity, data, then the stop bits to match our parameters. For us, these parameters already match what the Copley uses. We can also enable and disable flow control. The Copley uses none. We're going to want to leave FIFO active, and our interface is already RS-232, but in this end port, there are multiple options available. Next, we need to change the operating mode of the end port. So we'll open that menu up and change the operating mode to TCP server mode in order for the robot to communicate to the end port. We need to remember what our TCP port is for later during the programming. We also should change our max connection to 2 in case we need to troubleshoot the end port. There's also some options for timeouts, but we're not going to try to change any of that right now. So we'll hit OK and begin configuring the end port. Our configuration is complete. We'll just search one more time to make sure that we did update our IP address and that should be all we need to do. Next, we need to set up the network on our UR. To do this, we need to change our IP address to be on the same network as our MOXA end port. We'll change our IP address to 192.168.1.5. We'll also need to change our subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. We'll apply, we'll let that take, and then we'll begin programming. We'll need to use a few script commands in order to communicate with the end port. We use socket open first. Inside that command, we need to enter in the MOXA IP address as well as the port number for the COM. And we'll stick this inside of a loop to ensure that we make a connection. Next, we can go ahead and add some of our ASCII command lines. For instance, this line, G space R0 X24, asks the copy to return the drive status register value. To do this, we use a subprogram, copy get. We use copy send string get to send down our command characters. We then use socket send byte 13 to send the carriage return ASCII character to signal the end of the line. We then use get reply socket read string in order to read the drive's response back to us. We can issue other commands to the drive using the same syntax. For instance, this command s space r 0 x 24 space 0 sets the drive status to disabled. We can then use copy send, which is a clone of our copy get subprogram using the same script commands in order to send the command down and read the drive's reply. We can also requery the drive to see that the status has changed using our copy get program. We can also then reset the drive using the R command and send that down with copy send. We'll then close our connection and use sync to make sure that we don't run into any looping errors. So now we can hit play and test out our program. So immediately we can see that we are changing the drive state via the git reply and we're able to reset and reconnect to the drive multiple times. By adding further commands we can actually control motion from the servo drive. If we use an event or thread to control this instead, we wouldn't even need to interrupt the main robot program. That's it for this tutorial. I'd like to thank everyone for watching.